that sandblasting. Let me show you my setup. This is just the, the standard pressure washer. This right here is the kit. It's just pretty much this big long hose. Um, this is your suction hose. So this just sits down in the sand. And that's what this is. This is. And then it sucks up the hose and sprays out the front of the pressure washer. And this just has a standard pressure washer with the removable tips. So that just clips on right there. And this consists of a uh, siphon feed tube. And there's a little ceramic nozzle in here. So there's just a little ceramic nozzle in here. And this just goes through, nothing, nothing really to it. Just like that. And just to keep it, keep this hose a little bit more under control, I just got a, a basic clamp. And then I just hold it, and I just hold it upright, and you just spray. And it will spray out a stream about the size, that's pretty concentrated. Um, up close, a small dime, further out, nickel maybe a quarter at a distance. And this hose, it seems pretty long. This is the pressure washer hose, this is the garden hose, that's the pressure washer hose, and this is the hose with the siphon feed. And it seems pretty long. You need it to dip into the sand, but water sprays everywhere. Ricochet is off everything. So this umbrella thing, it's like a lawn chair umbrella or something, made it doable. There's so much water, because if you get it wet, it won't spray. So it, it took a, a lot of abuse. So everything you see here took seven five gallon buckets of play sand that were filtered and dried. But the idea was I wanted to get all the areas that are difficult to use like a DA to sand. And so all the nooks and crannies, you know, that would take you forever to try to sand um, is a huge time saver. The big flat areas, I don't know if that's a huge time saver, but to sand all this would have taken forever to get up in there, all these grooves, you know, just around down in here. Um, it would have been so much time. The floor, no real reason to sand some spots like where the carpet's gonna be, that doesn't matter. But to get around everything else, um, very helpful. This actually took a while, even with the uh, the sandblaster, is to get in and out of all of these louvers, you know. But then, because the the original paint was peeling, and then the secondary coat of paint was peeling, um, you know, I just got around to areas that were going to be really difficult to sand with the DA. Everything else is pretty flat, you know. I skipped. I got down in there, but I skipped. Like this big flat panel, this is this is just take virtually no time at all to just sand that. It got the edges though, all the way around, around the door jams, around the whole windshield frame. Um, you know, I found that I, I knew I had a little rust spot, but I had a little rust spot right here, and then there's a sister one on the other side over there. But to get this whole rain gutter, drip rail, completely cleaned out is really nice. I didn't have enough sand really to do the top. I was just kind of going until I ran out of sand. But um, pretty nice. I did the, the front of the dash, the under the dash. Um, a lot of areas, you know, it would take you forever to sand in and out of here. And it, eventually you just kind of scuff it and then you just, yeah, good enough and paint over the top. But somebody had repainted this once. It was originally white and they'd repainted it white. And I don't know what kind of paint they used, but it's horrible. It almost seemed like it was a, I don't know, you can see it just chipping off. But then there's the original paint, so there's a white paint, a gray primer, a white paint, and there's the factory red primer under there. I don't know if you can really see it. 
So all the sand can be reused. So this is my sand catch. What I have is just a tarp and the water, I have some boards, the water flows out. But this is uh, roughly three, four inches, three inches thick of sand. And the water flows over the top. The sand sinks down the bottom. You can re-scoop up the sand, re-filter it, re-screen it, and reuse it. And then it comes down here, and then there's another bunch of sand down here, and the water kind of flows out the side. So it collects most of it, and you can reuse it pretty much indefinitely. So this sand has been left to dry out because it needs to be completely dry. This is play sand or masonry sand, so it needs to be really fine. And you have to sift it almost no matter what. And even though it looks really good, you'd be surprised at what you find in it. So this is just a, uh, a contraption I made out of, this is just a like house window screen. And that mesh seems to be just fine for actually doing sandblasting. So this is what the sandblaster looks like all boxed up. I bought it off of Amazon. It cost me $69 delivered, $69.11 delivered, and this is pretty much, and that's all you get, plus the, the tip. And earlier I said this was a, uh, a ceramic tip in the video, but it's actually, I thought it was, this is actually, it's either tungsten or just hardened, hardened steel, and that's inserts in here. All together, I did about 350, 400 pounds of sand through this, but after 200, 250 pounds of sand, I had completely worn out the tip, so my performance was really lacking, and it slowed stuff down dramatically. Um, this being $69 delivered, the tip by itself to buy a new tip is about $35, which I think is a little ridiculous how much they charge for the tip. So I was actually going to buy the, uh, I was actually going to modify this with the, um, you can buy these ceramic tips for dry sandblasting that are only two, three bucks a piece, and I was gonna have to drill this out or something. Pretty much just mount it on the front. It looks like this is about a six millimeter hole before it got all egged out and stuff from that from the sand. But it's nice, the wet sandblasting. Uh, one of the keys to the wet sandblasting is it doesn't warp your panel. If you did dry sandblasting, you know, just even dry sandblasting something like this, you could warp it, permanently warp it, and permanently damage it. And you have to use more protective suit you have to use, you can't use just regular sand, so you're, you're using stuff that's 30 to $50 for a 50 pound bag. You're using expensive, expensive stuff, and you know, it can cost you, it'll cost you 10 times what, you know, $69 and I use free sand. Just sand that actually I uh, got off just the local classified. So I use free sand, 70 bucks there. The pressure washer was the biggest cost. Because um, you need a pressure washer that will do a minimum three gallons per minute. No, 2.7 gallons, 2.5 gallons. It just won't do it. I tried doing it with a 2.7 gallon pressure washer and just want to pick it up. Pressure washer I did do it with. I built in another video. It does about four and a half gallons per minute at almost 4,000 PSI. And that did actually a good. This will do up to eight gallons per minute. The higher the gallons per minute that the pressure washer pushes out, the more sand that it carries and the the faster it works, the, the better it will work for you. But again, I ran out of sand, so I just did the, the areas that um, would take forever with the sander. I mean, if I did this all by hand around this whole windowsill, this, that would have been probably four hours of work just doing all the way around there, where the whole thing to sandblast everything in out, you know, I wasn't rushing, rushing or anything. I think it took me about four hours of actually sandblasting to go through, you know, 350, 400 pounds of sand, you know, it took me quite a while, but I was going, I mean, there's a, I was doing a lot of intricate details, just not flat panels. Um, for everything else, for all the flat panels, it's still takes quite a while. I'm just using a DA with the big compressor and air compressor. It takes quite a bit of expensive equipment to, to do this sort of thing. Um, I could do it with a little electric sander. It would take a lot longer, but uh, I'll put a link to all this stuff. Um, below in the description along with a, a, a product called hold tight that will actually prevent the flash rush you can see how much flash rush I did get I mean but I mean the flash rush that's there it will come off you know just with light sanding and the flash rush is gone there's the product called hold tight I didn't use it 
um, because I live in a very dry climate and I don't get that much surface rust. I mean, this has been bare steel right here just for me sanding it for almost a week now right here and you, there's no rust. And I, stuff that doesn't flash rust here where I live, but the hold tight supposedly keeps this stuff from ever um, flash rusting for weeks or months or a good long time. So thanks for watching guys. Have a good one. See you soon. Bye.